Hey guys, how is everyone doing today? Uh, welcome to the first of uh, Data with Bill Google Analytics Fundamental Series, where we are going to essentially run like an online course style uh, sessions on Google Analytics and how can you take advantage of Google Analytics with your business. And today uh, with us here is Patrick. Uh, Patrick is the Chief Development Officer for Human Analytics and uh, my name is Bill Sue. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm the CEO and founder of Human Analytics. And uh, so today uh, is, we're going to do like a slightly different style than we had before. It's more going to be me explaining this uh, in perspective I have. And then Patrick is going to chime in with some questions if he has. So it's not going to be interview style. It's more going to be just me talking for like around 10 minutes. Uh, the format of this is also going to be uh, quite different. So we're going to try to make this short and brief. So it's only going to be around 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to only cover like very few key questions about Google Analytics that just to kick, uh, get us started and then uh, we're going to return uh, every two weeks uh, to get a new session going and uh, uh, to cover more about Google Analytics because it's quite, it's quite a large top, topic, to be honest. And uh, all the materials that I cover in this class are going to be made available after, both in the form of this video and I also have a note that uh, I wrote that I'm going to be available either through, uh, both through the VFA group me and through online. So stay tuned with that as well. So without further ado, uh, let's get started with uh, Google Analytics. So when talking about Google Analytics, let's actually just pull a Google Analytics screen up here. So if you are working in a business, uh, any sort of business, you probably are familiar with Google Analytics. And uh, we actually talk to like a lot of people. And uh, I think the biggest problem right now is that they were, yeah, geez, Bill, I know what Google Analytics is, but I don't know how to take advantage of it. And I don't know what specifically it does uh, as a tool and why is it important. So I guess the first question we're going to go through today is to explain why this tool we're seeing here uh, on the screen right now is important. So essentially what Google Analytics is, is a free web analytics tool offered by Google uh, that offers various metrics about your website. For example, like how many traffic on your website, uh, who visits your website, what are your user attributes, and what are user behaviors on your website. And one of the common questions I got asked a lot when we're covering issues like Google Analytics is that geez, Bill, like I know like it's web analytics, but uh, it's like a very small part of digital analytics, right? Because like I have Facebook, I have Twitter, I have social media, I have like other websites and you worry about. So I don't want to spend too much time in just doing this one thing, sending up this one to spend so much time learning it. Yeah, I, I think that argument is valid, but at the same time, uh, if you think about uh, your, your digital presence or your website. Website is actually at the center of your digital presence. So if you think about, if you think the entire web traffic in terms of uh, uh, airline traffic uh, from around the United States, like just flying around, like your website is like on triple, your website is like Houston, your website is like airport, whereas all, all the traffic aggregates into your website and it comes out to your business, whether a customer make a purchase or if you are getting a lead in the perspective of a service company. So websites is really at the center of everything when you are uh, doing your digital presence and uh, doing digital analytics. So through web analytics, you not only understand uh, who visits your website or what is your website behavior looks like, but also just in general, uh, as an audience who are interested in the uh, product and services you're offering uh, and who is most likely to be your core audience to target through all the media channels like Facebook, like LinkedIn, like social media, like influencer marketing, things like that. So uh, web analytics is, is actually quite important uh, if, if you think about like in the grand scheme of digital analytics and in fact like over 50 million people around the world uses Google Analytics, uh, have Google Analytics installed on their website and then numbers keep growing as Google Analytics become more popular. So if you don't have Google Analytics set up, my recommendation would be to set up immediately right away uh, in order to take full advantage of it. And I'm like in the guide that I published later, we're not going to talk about in details how to set those up because that takes like a long session to go over in the first place. But I'm going to in the material hand off afterward to briefly touch, uh, give you a link on how to set up those things with like Google Analytics tracking code. Patrick, do you have any questions? Uh, meanwhile, about uh, the talk we were just covered, just in, in, in your perspective. No, that all sounds good. Um, I can see how Google Analytics is mission critical for any business. Um, so how does it work exactly? So Google Analytics, uh, let, let's illustrate an example. So today, like for the entirety of this course, we're going to use Google Merchandise Store uh, as an example because first of all, it's free. 
And the second thought is like, Google Analytics also gave you a free demo account on Google Merchandise Store. So we can look through the website of Google Merchandise Store without infringing anyone's privacy or any privacy or current clients. So if you look at this Merchandise Store, what Google Analytics does is that it essentially like this touch part of how to set up Google Analytics in the first place as well. So we're going to the source code of uh, uh, Google Merchandise Store. So this, the one I'm highlighting right here, right now, that is Google Analytics. So essentially what Google Analytics is, it's few lines of code that are embedded in your website that collects data on all aspects of your web traffic uh, as people are visiting through your traffic. So it records how, what pages are being visited, uh, who visits your page, uh, if I like click on some events and if that event set up, we'll record that event as well. And all these information are packaged and being sent to Google. And then Google aggregates the data on multiple levels to provide you information that are concrete and uh, that are relevant might be to your business. For example, like where are my visitors coming from or where are the pages that people drop off the most. Uh, just in general, Google aggregates data on uh, four levels. So the, the biggest level is on a user level. So who are my users? Uh, what are my user attributes? Where, where are they from? Uh, what are their browsing behaviors? How many sessions they visit per like in total in, in, within their lifetime? Things like that. And uh, the, th the second thing that they, uh, the second level they aggregate on, it's the sessions level. So when I'm talking about sessions level, it's per visit. That, that's a, the session is, is the technical term for being per visit. They, they basically calculate like the duration of the visit, how many pages are being visited per visit, and things like that. They also calculate on page view level. So essentially, if you're looking at all the pages, right? Is a hit in Google Analytics and this mess this data is sent to Google Analytics. So you can uh, figure out the length of the page, whether that page is the last visit of uh, your users on Google Analytics and uh, things like that. And the final level is uh, it's on event level. So if I'm clicking on any of these buttons, over here, if I'm uh, essentially like clicking on this product page, if this event is being tracked in Google Analytics, Google Analytics will essentially measure it and then send it as a message as well. All right, so that's all the levels uh, of data that are being provided by Google Analytics. And the next thing we're going to touch briefly about is what kind of data are being collected by Google Analytics in the first place. So to do that, uh, before, to, before we even start with that, uh, one huge distinction we need to make here is uh, the differences between metrics and dimensions uh, in Google Analytics. So Google Analytics collect two general types of data, uh, metrics and dimensions. So the way I would like to think difference between metrics and dimensions is that metrics, Google Analytics essentially slice and dice metrics across different dimensions to be able to provide you with business insight. By that, what I mean, so metrics are concrete data being collected by Google Analytics about your website. So for example, like how many people visit your website in the first place, uh, the duration of each visit, uh, whether that's an exit page or that's a landing page for your users, any things like that. And then, uh, but however, like if you only calculate this kind of data, for example, like I can tell you, Bill, uh, Google Merchandise Store got 10,000 visits uh, last week. It was like, yeah, cool. That, that gives me like a little bit of information, but it doesn't give me a whole lot other things about uh, what is really relevant to me. So I need to slice and dice dimensions. So dimensions are things like user demographics, so whether the user are male or female, what, what is their age group, whether their interest, where are they from geographically, things like that. So I can tell not only how many people visit my website in general, but also how many people uh, from, for example, New York are visiting my website, how many people from Texas are visiting my website, how many people from different parts of the United States are visiting my website which will be much better in terms of make, uh, having me make a business decision of where I want to promote my website next. Uh, so that's what essentially slice and dicing metrics cross different dimension means. So with that said, uh, I'm also going to attach a link that further that explains this further and probably in more depth, a blog post we actually wrote uh, that goes in more deep in explaining the difference between dimensions and metrics and uh, what are the common dimension metrics are available on Google through Google Analytics. Uh, and you can also go on this page that I'm at right now, which is a dimension metric explorer to understand completely uh, what are avail uh, available here in Google Analytics. And then finally, 
the, the last thing we're going to talk about is uh, what data are being collected by Google Analytics and uh, uh, how, how do, do they work in term, into your business framework and what kind of business action you can take uh, with, with those data. So in Google Analytics, I would like to primarily segment data by uh, two, th there are primarily two types of data. So the data they collect about your users before they visit and the data they collect about you, your users during your visit. And then they have different implications for either. So for the uh, data they collect before your users visits, those are called like in general acquisition data. Uh, acquisition data and what acquisition data can help you do is to figure out what is the most optimal channel to advertise at and uh, who are your most uh, popular audiences and what kind of message you should send to them across different channel to, to best engage them and make you make them perform the action you want to perform on your website. And then the next thing, uh, the, data is, uh, the data they collect, so for example, let's let just make some examples about uh, pre-visit uh, uh, pre examples. For example, like in, in, in the audience tab, you can see the demographic of your visitors. I just wait a second for it to... So for example, in Google Merchandise Store, the most popular demographic is 25 to 34 years old. So this should be the specific age demographic that it targets in all the advertisement that it's, it is, it's advertising to get more users in the 25 to 34 years old. And then a lot of them are male, not surprising to be in Google Merchandise Store. So they probably need to lean their message more towards like a male liking message and a female liking message. So things like that, uh, that's what uh, data collected before user visit your website can provide you with. And also channels, uh, for example, here, for Google itself, it tells you like, so most of the traffic from organic search, in fact, uh, almost over half of the traffic from organic search and then some from direct, some from referral, some from social, we're going to touch them uh, in more depth in the future video series. But uh, essentially, this is where users are coming from. It shows that they probably need to do some paid ads or uh, do some search engine optimization to fully leverage the traffic they're coming from here and then probably do more uh, social media engagement with their visitors. So more people are coming from social to their website. So the next thing, the next general category of data Google can collect about uh, your website is uh, people's behavior on a website. So one of the biggest questions you have about your website is that sometimes there are one or two pages on your website that just happen to have some errors and happen to have inefficiencies that user drop off the most from. So user might, for example, want to uh, go on your website to make a purchase and uh, your add to cart page is in fact very inefficient in terms of driving users to make that specific purchase and you need to identify those pages and be able to optimize and fix them. And Google Analytics can help you that uh, in a way that it shows you all statistics related to your page. So for example, if you go to, once again, we're gonna, we're gonna cover this in more detail uh, in future video series, but for example, in, in the all pages here, you can look at all your pages and you can see how many visits are on each of these pages. Obviously, home page is one that is enormously popular. And add to basket page is something that's popular, which is good because it, th they are trying to make you make purchases about Google merchandises uh, online and on their website. And uh, so essentially, like, and then you look at the bounce rate exit rate. So you see that a lot of people exit from shop by brand. So th that may, might be a question mark of why do people exit there? Uh, maybe that page can be optimized to better user experiences in promoting user to probably add these products uh, onto their basket and eventually make a purchase or something like that. So essentially, uh, any data collected here can help you optimize your user experiences uh, on your website through like, and actions doing that will be like directing which pages you should A-B test and things like that. Yeah, so uh, essentially that's an overview of uh, what data are being collected by Google and how does it work, uh, the functionality and the essentially like the technology behind it. And like Patrick, do you have any just general questions about everything I explained here uh, or anything that you want to add on top of that? I guess my first question is just uh, how the setup process works. I know you said you'll send some links, but, but do you have to know what you want to track ahead of time or does it kind of leave that open? Like you, you might be able to choose those metrics later down the line. So it mostly leaves it open uh, for what metrics to track uh, down the line. Uh, there are only a few things that you need to set up. Uh, for example, event level tracking. So tracking button clicks, you actually need to set up button clicks. If you want to track like a specific purchase funnel or purchase goal, that is user's behavior. So if, for example, if you 
want to keep track of how many users visit your homepage, add a product to their basket, and eventually make a purchase, uh, that specific funnel you need to set up manually for it to be accurately tracked. But other than that, all other data are available just natively after you set up Google Analytics. So for your average small business, how much time do you think it would take for them to set up? So setting up takes probably like five to 10 minutes uh, if they have access to the backend of their website. So, but sometimes the difficulty is that because Google Analytics is a code-based uh, analytic tool, so it means that you need to add some code into every second of your website. Uh, one of the biggest challenge I encounter small businesses have is to be able to have access to the backend of the uh, website. But once you have it, uh, it's very easy to set up. I mean, Google, even WordPress, Squarespace, all the popular uh, CRM, uh, all the popular content management platforms, they actually have Google Analytics integration in there already. So it, it literally entails like one setting in the setting tab of those platforms. My last question was just, uh, you mentioned you're going to go more in depth next week. I was just curious, can you give a sneak peek of what topic we'll be covering next week? Yeah, so next, next week, uh, yes, so next week, uh, what we're going to go over is uh, a business framework, a, a basic analytics framework on how can you utilize data from Google Analytics for multiple, pur well, for like various purposes you may have in your business. So Google Analytics, I, I, I found the biggest problem for Google Analytics right now is all the data here is pretty enormous. It's actually like everyone I talk to, they are surprised by how many data are being offered at Google, especially for free, uh, their body website. But the biggest challenge is that the data like freezing in time today, it doesn't really tell you anything. It also doesn't tell you the consequences of your business business decisions or what to act next, or like what to do to act next. Uh, so Google Analytics really, it should be a dynamic tool that you reference to as like a guideline or like a dashboard uh, as you make business decisions. Uh, and sometimes small businesses found it difficult to be able to do that. Uh, so in the next section, we're going to cover a little bit about just like a simple analyzed action and monitor uh, framework that came up by ourselves uh, to essentially tell you more about how you use this data to keep track of all the business decisions you have to both inform and keep track of all the business decisions you have uh, in the future.